Hi, a real quick content warning. This episode includes the town forming a lynch mob, and that imagery may be uncomfortable for some viewers. Okay, so this is an episode that has really surprised me. I hadn't watched it in a while, and coming back to it, I could almost be convinced it was actually a season 2 episode. Hi, I'm Torin, and welcome to Torin Loves the Simpsons. Today, we're looking at Season 1, Episode 8, The Telltale Head, an episode where Bart, in an effort to make some cool kids like him, beheads the statue of town founder Jebediah Springfield, incurring the wrath of the town, culminating in Bart atoning before a mob of townsfolk intent on lynching him. Let's dive in. We stand humor on this channel, so as always, we're starting with that. In the last episode, we talked about the development of what I call a joke combo, and we get a great one in this episode when the family is watching TV before Bart confesses to them. Jebediah's long string of names, followed by the narrator spelling out B-A-R-E hands, followed by the casual mention of there being new evidence that the historical record is false. That all really hits for me. The narrator's delivery is just great. We have a really fantastic moment when Homer is listening to the football game in church and Reverend Lovejoy's sermon visually matches up with the game broadcast. I love how they build that moment up with the visual cuts, and I just find the juxtaposition of the radio voices against the visual of Reverend Lovejoy really funny. The clip of Space Mutants 4 feels like it'd fit in any Golden Era season. The terrible line with dramatic delivery when the character says, I think I hear something not human. It's a great device that I'm pretty sure they use plenty of times later on in in in-show movies, although I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. It gives the in-show movie a feel that I wouldn't quite call campy, but it's camp-adjacent. Also, real quick, it's worth mentioning, don't behave like this guy in the movie, no means no. There are various other jokes that feel so natural to the rest of the series compared to the rest of the season we've seen so far, like the exasperated Sunday school teacher and Bart's estimate of how long the story will take to tell the town, and Krusty muttering, this better be good, under Bart beginning his story. Like I said at the beginning of this review, this episode totally feels like it could be from season 2 or maybe even season 3 in a lot of ways. Which is not a surprise, because writing credits on this episode are partially held by Al Jean and Mike Reese, who would go on to co-show around seasons 3 and 4, so we have a lot of that DNA present. The remainder of the writing credits are held by Matt Groening and Sam Simon, two of the three original showrunners and basically the three original founders of the show. Also, fun fact about this moment, the story is actually significantly shorter than the 23 minutes 5 seconds Bart estimates, but that estimate does pretty roughly match up with the long end of a season 1 episode runtime, and it almost exactly matches up with the runtime of my DVD rip of the previous episode, which I'm sure is pure coincidence due to the production delays and order shuffling that I discussed in the Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire review. So yeah, the humor in this episode is great, with solid jokes throughout and an overall pacing that we really haven't seen in any other episodes so far. While we do have another joke combo in this episode, and a solid one at that, we don't have anything particularly revolutionary or groundbreaking with regards to the comedy, so I don't think this episode deserves S-tier for humor, but I think this episode does about the best I think it could do with the comedic stylings they had to work with so far, so I'm giving it an a for humor. And when it comes to the plot, this episode is still no slouch. I praised the previous episode for having a solid characterization of Homer, but in this episode, pretty much everyone's characterization is spot on. There is still a relatively small cast of characters compared to the roster we get to know over the years moving forward, but for the characters they have written so far, they all feel right. There isn't a single moment in this episode that feels jarring to me. I particularly want to talk about the characterization of the Sunday school teacher, because not only does she make for some great jokes like I mentioned earlier, but she's a great example of how far the character writing has come. In a lot of the previous episodes we've seen so far, there's this stiff and forced quality to a lot of the scripting and characterization, but this episode is overall great about loosening up and making the characters feel more genuine, and the Sunday school teacher is the best example of that in my opinion. The way her patience gets worn down is so good. It's the kind of offbeat side character we see all the time in the rest of the series. I get the feeling this was one of the later episodes written in the season 1 cycle because of how season 2 it feels. This is also the episode that establishes the name Jebediah Springfield and the town's obsession with him. Like, they stand him so hard that the entire friggin' town mobs up over a vandalized statue. 
This is absolutely authentic to the rest of the series, and the town's collective jebediitis goes on to fuel plenty of other plots moving forward, most notably Lisa of the Iconoclast in Season 7, which, another fun fact, is another episode where one of the Simpsons kids has an actual brush with death over Jebediah. And I mentioned during Humor, the TV special about Jebediah casually mentioning evidence contradicting the public perception of Jebediah, so it's awesome to see them basically completely foreshadowing Lisa the Iconoclast already. And of course, we gotta talk about Bart's character arc, with it being so obviously central to the plot. Here's actually where I have the most mixed feelings about the episode. It certainly makes for a compelling plot, but I feel like they let Bart and Homer off the hook a little too easily. That all it takes to turn a murderous mob into All Is Forgiven is a story about I did it to impress some kids. Bart's redemption doesn't feel earned, both in a storyline sense and a real sense, as in, like, what kind of social example this sets. This is so boys will be boys, and I don't like that attitude. It's sexist and also doesn't seem to apply to boys of all skin colors in real life. What if we're able to set aside those concerns and look solely at whether or not it makes for a compelling plot? Sure, it's pretty good, though it still feels like a bit of a stretch that the story would be enough to placate such a murderous mob. There's a little bit of an easter egg in this episode for those who know the names of the show staff. Right around when Homer grabs Bart's stereo and heads into church, the football announcer mentions a player named Wolodarski, which is a reference to Wallace Wolodarski, one of the writers on the show staff at the time, who so far has only been responsible for the absolute banger that is Homer's Odyssey, but we'll see more from him. Of course, the plot and title are largely referential to Edgar Allan Poe's short story The Telltale Heart, I read it once in high school, but that was a long time ago. I was already familiar with this episode, so I think I still remember it pretty well. Also, fun fact about Edgar Allan Poe, he apparently had an 1840s-style rap beef with another writer who published an obituary under a false name to basically tell the public, yeah, he died, no one cares. Which is a real dick move, if you ask me. Anyways, yeah, no, I think this is a mostly pretty solid plot, and I think the literary reference will generally have appeal to those who are into that kind of thing, and that's cool. As much as I want to fault the episode for letting Bart off the hook so easily, I gotta admit I really enjoy watching the story, and while it's not nearly on the level of Bart the General in this regard, I think it has a nice sense of escalation during Act 3 that makes the ending feel pretty satisfying. This plot gets an A plus from me. And now for the final rating, which is probably pretty easy to guess, because both humor and plot were A+. So yeah, this episode overall gets an A+. I think this episode does an excellent job of balancing its elements. We get pretty well intermingled segments of plot development with jokes and other comedic moments. I don't think it's an overlooked classic, but I do think it's a great episode that's worth keeping in the rotation, or giving a first watch if you've never seen it before. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notifications bell. Up next is Life on the Fast Lane, so I will see you in that video.